A Rash Assumption, from Punch, December the 9th, 1914. Recorded for LibriVox Coffee Break Collection, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ruth Golding. A Rash Assumption, Author Unknown. On the morning of November the 27th, I awoke to find my chest covered with a pretty pink pattern. It blended so well with the colour of my pyjama jacket that for some minutes I was lost in admiration of the pleasing effect. Then it occurred to me that coming diseases cast their rashes before them, and I sprang from the bed in an agony of apprehension. I rushed to the mirror and opened my mouth to look at my tongue. There it was. I took some of it out. It looked quite healthy, so I put it back again. Then I gazed long and earnestly down my throat. It was quite hollow, as usual. Next I got the clinical thermometer, and sucked it for quite a long time. When I removed it, I saw my temperature was about eighty-six. Then I found I was reading it upside down, and that I was only normal. I felt disappointed. After that I tried my pulse. It took me some time to locate it, but it hadn't run down. It was still going quite regularly, and Dante ma non troppo, two beats in the bar. I whistled Tipperary to it, and it kept perfect time. But still the rash remained. It would neither get out nor get under. I felt perfectly well, and yet I knew I must be ill. I could not understand the complete absence of other symptoms. At last a bright idea struck me. It was just possible that I might refuse food. I knew that would be a symptom. At any rate, I would go down to breakfast and see. I dressed rapidly. I simply tore my clothes on to me. I shaved hastily. I literally tore the whiskers out of me. Then I tore downstairs. On the table was an egg. I removed the lid and looked inside. It was full of evil odours. I refused it. Then I knew for certain I was ill. I tore back to my bedroom and tore off my clothes. I unshaved. I tumbled into bed and tried hard to shiver. I tried so hard that I perspired. As I was really ill, I knew that I had to get hot and cold alternately ever so many times. I did my best to live up to all the symptoms I had ever heard of. I tried to get delirious and talk nonsense, but I failed ignominiously. How I cursed my public school education! In my extremity I even endeavoured to imagine that I saw things which were not there. And then I saw something which really was there. It was my pincushion. It looked unusually crowded, even for a pincushion, and I got out of bed to investigate the matter closer. I counted... Forty-five, yes, forty-five little flags. And then memory came back to me. The previous day I had bought forty-five miniature Belgian flags at one time and another during the day. Each charming but inexperienced vendor had insisted on pinning my purchase wherever there happened to be an unoccupied space on my manly, thanks to my tailor, bosom. I remembered being conscious of a prickly sensation on each occasion, but I attributed it to rapturous thrills running about the region of my heart. To make sure that my explanation was correct, I went once again to the mirror and hastily counted my rash. There were forty-five of it. End of a Rash Assumption 